Nearly 100 CEOs from around the globe are attending the Business Council Conference in Chicago. And our Lisa Murphy is live at the meeting with one of them, the CEO of AGCO. Lisa? Hi, Julie. Yes, I'm here with Martin Richenhagen. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, let's start talking about commodity prices. This is a, we've seen corn, we've seen wheat right near their two-year highs. It's been a good thing for Adco. You're the third largest manufacturer of trailers in the world. Explain that. Why are commodity prices going up? Good for the company. And you've also said that you expect this trend to continue over the long term. Yes, for me it's not a surprise. And uh, I think uh, it's somewhat normal that a farmer makes enough money to be in a position to grow his business and to survive and make some profits without subsidies. So that means uh, solid commodity prices are good for farm income. Uh, and uh, it's a factor of uh, supply and demand. And uh, I think right now and also in the future we will see that more and more demand is higher than supply. And, and this is because of a growing world population? Yes. It's, uh, the world population grows while we speak, 156 people every minute. We still have one child dying every 50, 15 seconds. So that's really something which has to be fixed. The world population needs food. The world population is growing. In emerging markets, uh, um, uh, the diet is changing. So people tend to eat more meat, which means that you have to put in uh, almost six times the crops in order to eat chicken or pig or beef or whatever you like. And then we have renewable fuels, which are also a, an important growth factor. Okay, all of three of these have been good for your stock, which is right near a 52-week high. Now, let's talk a little bit, and this is a, a theme at the Business Council meeting here, is trade and doing business outside the U.S. 70% of your business is done outside the U.S., yet many of the CEOs here have expressed concern over protectionist trade policies, as well as U.S. government regulation. How does that affect AGCO? Well, actually, we believe in free markets, and uh, we manufacture in most of the markets. We are in close to where our customers are. We have massive Ferguson factories in Europe and in South America and Brazil. We have a FENT, which is the high-tech uh, brand in our, in the Rolls-Royce of the tractor business in Germany. We have uh, Valtra factories in Finland. We do all the farm equipment for the Caterpillar dealers with the Challenger brand here in the U.S. So that means we try to somewhat be and produce and manufacture and also create uh, uh, labor in countries where we do business in. And is the government intervening in any direct way in businesses that fall into your sector? Well, yes, through emission regulations. That's really a burden because uh, it's good for the environment and therefore I support the idea, but it's very expensive uh, in engineering. And then, of course, uh, U.S. government, like I think also other governments in the world try to regulate, over-regulate, try to influence things, become too bureaucratic and too heavy. And I was very scared to hear how many people in America live and work from and for the government. So that's not healthy. And people this is on should the brink work. Of you becoming a U.S. citizen, you mentioned <laughs> yes, to me. Yes, exactly. You've applied for your citizenship and you're based out of Georgia. So I that's didn't pending. change my mind yet. Okay, well, that's a good thing. Let's talk a little bit about you're, you're number two in India. You have a big presence there. But everyone is excited about China. You can't meet a CEO here who isn't excited about China. How does that, how does that affect your business? And where is your growth there? Is it on the manufacturing side or is it selling products into China? So far it was selling product into China. Uh, and we do that for many, many years. We are the biggest importer of farm equipment to China. But we uh, just opened uh, uh, two factories. And the plan is we will produce their components for a tractor platform, which is more for what we call the lifestyle farmer. So it's small tractors under 120 horsepower, where uh, it's a it's a very uh, cost-driven market. So people buy those tractors. They want they don't want to pay too much money for it. They have to be robust but not high tech. And so this platform we will localize in China. We will produce the components in China, like transmissions, engines, axles, uh, and then they will be uh, packed in containers and will, will be brought to the final markets like America and Europe and South America for, for final assembly uh, in, in a CKD approach. This at the same time helps us also to 
localized a tractor in China. And China is completely different from other markets in the world because it's not mechanized yet. It has huge potential because most of the farming today is still done like in the Middle Age manually. Right, which is a great opportunity of growth for you. But you had mentioned something earlier to me, which I think is something that applies to any company manufacturing in China, is that intellectual property as a concept there is not particularly well developed either. Yeah, China doesn't have a law system like we have. So there is, uh, in most of the part, no written law. You can't study law, but you become a judge when you are a good party member. And so they speak law more or less by common sense. And that makes, of course, pro protection of intellectual property and also the other business life a little bit more complex. Uh, I uh, see it a little bit in a way that I'm proud that we already today have Chinese who copy our product. That means it's good. Okay. Uh, and we will be there and we will show them that we have even more okay. advanced ideas. Martin Richard Hayden, thank you so much. CEO of ACO joining us.